Okay. So what is your name? Hi, I'm Raphael O'Neill, uh, Liberty Beacon uh, co-contributor and uh, investigative journalist for climate science and engineering. And can you spell your name just so I have R-A-P-H-A-E-L-L-E. O'Neill is with an E-I-L, and don't forget that apostrophe. Very good, thank you. And uh, we ran into each other previously uh, talking about the chemtrail problem and how people use semantics to really screw everything up and how that's the main problem behind the chemtrail discussion is that people don't know how to talk about it, uh, let alone when you get lost in semantics, it makes it impossible to find the truth. So really, in a world of SEO, semantics is everything. Yes. Uh, we hooked up on that. She wrote a great series of articles. I shared all of them on Climate Thank you. And, uh, uh-huh. and she wanted to talk about some hurricanes. Yeah, so um, so besides having on my podcast uh, interviewed the uh, Army captain who uh, was ordered to bring as many body bags as he could to New Orleans uh, 11 days before Katrina made landfall. Uh-huh. He brought 5,226 body bags to New Orleans eight days before Katrina made landfall. I, living in New Orleans, didn't know about it till three days before the storm, and he, he was told it was satellites uh, that they had that, that told them how they, they knew this. Mm-hmm. He has since, uh, two weeks ago, I got a, call, a knock on the door from the detective, and he showed me a picture of a man with his head uh, blown off, and asked me if I knew it. It was still somewhat on there, and I said, yeah, that was the army captain that gave me that testimony. He, within a year, he was uh, shot dead, in case of mistaken identity. Wow. They were saying that they're, they, they don't know who he is still. It was nine months ago that this happened. Wow. And I said that he's an army captain. He said, oh, I doubt that. And I said, well, he had a lot of stories. And I saw his skin bleed from the rare bone cancer that half his unit got. And I met him in a totally organic way. So um, it, it's, it's mm. curious. But then for Harvey, I had a, a, a source in the military who told, called, told me I knew Harvey was coming to Texas before it was a tropical depression because... He was told to pack his bags, and he notified me. Mm-hmm. He was told even a few days prior to when he told contacted me. Mm-hmm. So I, I was kind of afraid of uh, having gone through Katrina. I had PTSD. I looked at Irma, and I noticed, lo and behold, Irma, the hurricane, uh, the guy was saying, our oh, Doppler is not going in very great right now because uh, uh, we can't make out too much because the, the hurricane. And I'm like, what? Boom, boom, boom. Ding, ding, ding. It was going right into that. And I said, you know, I don't know where it's going, but I bet you it can... We'll keep going from Doppler to Doppler. Get that it up. Did. Yeah, it's getting, probably getting a reflection on the sure. lights above. Well, it, it, yeah, and we have video of all this. This is, you know, documented. And then so the number three. you're saying the hurricane is following from the Doppler the radar station. Eye of the hurricane is binging, binging, binging. And now Nate, we did it with Nate too. It was coming into KLIX in New Orleans. Okay, and then later on you see it sucked in, like, just like goes like 45 degree turn, sucked into the next radar, and then the third and the fourth. We looked at Katrina, five Doppler radars in a row. We looked at Isaac, um, and, and we're, we're in the process as a lay, you know, we're lay people, so it, is, it takes a little bit of time to, to get it together. Yeah. But when did this start? Uh, even before Katrina, there was one other hurricane, and uh, we're trying to see if it started in 1998 or when, mm-hmm. if it's all of them, most of them. But in 2017, at Memoria, Puerto Rico, that Doppler radar was a magnet for the eye of the storm, and now we have a million people relocated, mm-hmm. and my heart goes out to them because yeah. I, I buried uh, a lot of friends the year after. Mm-hmm. Severe weather has consequences beyond losing your home. You lose your community. You lose your hope. Yep. Your doctors aren't around. You get depressed, and then you get suicidal, and I found my last friend with a bullet in his head. So there's enough casualty here. Now, in Houston, you have people that can't go back because it's not renewable or sustainable. Yep. Can, Agenda you, can you explain how the Doppler works? I, what, what, do well, Doppler radar is supposed to be... Uh, 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 you know, reading the, the but it's also a microwave. Seven hundred fifty thousand watts, typically. So it's seven hundred fifty thousand watts. It spins in a circle. Conic. It sends out a signal. The signal should reflect back. That's how they measure clouds, rainfall, all that sort of thing. But with radar they're controlling echoes. weather with it. Well, yeah. this is what we're seeing. So we're saying, is this inadvertent? If you want to give the benefit of the doubt, don't we need to be addressing that? And the yeah. problem is, if nobody's funding the studies, the studies don't get done. That's right. So this is a question people don't want answered. And and I'm going to take it even further back. 2012, um, a guy named Dutch Sense and I were talking about something called harpering. Right. And. Me and him butted heads for a long time because he was calling them Harperings, but they were next rads. And what I told him was that, you know, like you were talking about, semantics matter. And if we're going to get to the heart of this, 
calling them harp rings is going to keep people further from the truth. Up in Alaska. Right. Harp is in Alaska. There is only one harp. It is in Kokona, Alaska. So we had this, you know, button heads for so long till finally, honestly, Dutch didn't stop using the word harp rings altogether and stopped talking about it. And I kind of moved on because finding the evidence of the relationship between the pulses that come out of a next rad and its ability to affect weather is something not well documented. It's, it's the, the million dollar prize is finding that connection between electromagnetic radiation and weather control. Microwave uh, facilitated atmospheric energy projected system. Um, that's one. It, it, it sends a pulse that clears the way and then you can send your microwave further. So yeah. that, that clears the scattering uh, issues yeah. that might be. Yeah. And what we're seeing, I can actually show you, we, we saw p uh, lasers coming out of another one in Texas and then a plasma wave coming right over it. And, and that's called laser channeling. So lasers can be used to steer lightning bolts. They can be used for many different purposes. But lightning will follow the path of least resistance. So if they put a laser bolt up in the sky, the lightning will follow that down. It's the same as putting a wire in the sky. So similarly, they can clear paths in the in the sky with these electromagnetic radiations. What I looked into for Nexrad specifically was something called pencil mode or test mode. And what it said <coughs> was that if you fix the Nexrad radar in a location, if it's not continually spinning, it should only be in this locked position for less than five minutes because atmospheric heating will occur. So if you create a column where you heat it up with increasing heat comes an increase in pressure, basic science, you're creating a high pressure blocking zone by locking a next rad radar beam on a fixated location and heating it repeatedly. But of course the wind is moving, so it's not a fixed location. So like well, the wind affects the laser? Yeah. Okay. Well this is this isn't even this isn't even the laser. We're talking about the next rad in this case. So they have what's called test mode where they can lock it in one location and people see this all the day on the um, on the radars. You can go climateviewer.org, turn on next rad, and what you're gonna see is y'all can come on by. Um, what you're gonna see is that these radar beams, they should be spinning at all times, but for five, ten hours straight. It's the same return. It's one big thick beam in this location. If that's the case, something nefarious is going on. Something weird is going on. The radar is spitting out images all day for the local people, but when I'm looking at it, it's fixed in one location and constantly firing. Plus, have so. you noticed that sometimes you're in the sun and you're baking in it, and sometimes you're nuking in it? Like at certain times of the day, it, yeah. and, and I'm gonna be in the kitchen through the shade and I'm doing dishes and the door's yeah. open, and. I get hit with a beam and I'm like, ow, and I got a shirt on. Yeah. This is, I mean, and then the, later on in the day, it's not quite the same intensity. Yeah, and it, it's, it's something to do What's with... What's that about? It's ultraviolet radiation. And it, all right, so they had this thing, and I'm just is pulling this out of my butt, but it was called the burning glass. And it was first proposed like 1929 by some Russian dude who was like, we can make a magnifying glass in space and cook people on the planet or cook the poles and melt the ice. The um, Nazis were a fan of that yeah, too. Yeah, the Nazis wanted to build the sun super gun. the super sun gun, um, and it was a mirror in space similar idea. So you flash forward to today, they're able to create what are called artificial ionospheric mirrors, or um, and that's Harp and the Raytheon guys, but um, BAE Systems just came up with something called the Laser Developed Atmospheric Lens, and it's where you fly a, a ship up into space. You take lasers and you paint a pattern on the ionosphere repeatedly. You paint this grid pattern, which can make an artificial lens, which they can look through to spy at the ground. So they say they're going to make a spy satellite system that uses lasers to heat a portion of the atmosphere to make a lens so they can look in it and spy on people. Does that sound like a sun gun to you? It looks just. Yeah. If you make a lens that you can look through that magnifies things. I have a four year old and he does that. That's a magnifying glass in space created with a laser. Now, if anybody saw Real Science or My Science Project, which one? Val Kilmer, where they put the laser beam up there and cooked the guy in his seat in his backyard? Something like that. That's what they're talking yes. about. So that's the reality of the situation is defense contractors are trying geophysical warfare. Um, use our our, our our own planet as a weapon system. Yes. It, our own weapon system, our own, you know, planet is now a weapon and without any kind of controls, liability, someone to monitor it. Yeah. 
And uh, also another thing that you I never know what you're going to get. Yeah, uh, is the uh, the history of inadvertent weather modification by power plants uh, was studied in the '60s, '70s, uh, and then you had some uh, some stuff in the the '80s, but they never, you know, not uh, potential weather modification from cooling towers, effluent. Um, they've then they just stopped kind of worrying about it. Yeah. But and when you Google IPCC climate uh, uh, greenhouse gas graph, um, you have and you look at the image results, it's all carbon dioxide as the major player. And yet, we I recently learned just last year water that it's water vapor. It's water vapor. And that is the most prominent greenhouse gas, 80%. And the real, the real graph is, uh, oh, goodness, do I not have it here? I might have uh, drowned it, but anyway. The, be the beautiful part about it is that they, they, they focus solely on greenhouse gases and they throw out the two important ones, the sun and clouds. So if you have sun in my in my climate change what, what about pyramid, microwave heaters? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. In my in mine it goes like this. At the top, sun, galactic cosmic rays, cloud formation, water vapor, then greenhouse gases. And I've said that to many climate scientists who look at me and go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while biting their lip because it's, it's not accounted for in any of their climate models. Cloud aerosol interaction is the greatest unknown in climate science. Now, here's, a, here's another thing. Did you know that the American meteorological uh, president, Matthew J. Parker, recently died in his sleep at 53? He was working with, um, it was, it's interesting, it's weather, water, and climate enterprises. And here's another thing we noticed. We went to go look at Doppler in New Orleans on December 2nd, and it was down. They were making repairs or something. Well, that day we had the first real clouds. Talking about straight line bottom, mm -hmm. flat bottom clouds that we don't have anymore because Doppler's mm -hmm. evaporating it. We had a thick fog and normal clouds. The next day the thick fog was gone. Now, we still have fog every once in a while, but it thought it was an interesting thing, and it just hit me. This is hydrological cycle harvesting. And even in the weather, uh, World Meteorological Organization, they admit at the same time that they're saying there was no weather modification projects reported in the states because mm -hmm. NOA doesn't have to yeah. uh, report it. But they did at one point, but now well, they don't they, want to. They, they, don't tell, they don't tell them to the public. So the, the Weather Modification you Reporting have Act, you have, they still have to report. The law is you have to report weather modification to NOAA. But NOAA doesn't, doesn't have to give it to the public. You can call and request it. But the but the World Meteorological Organization did say that the, some of the longest uh, cloud seeding projects were uh, for 50 years the hydrological companies. So we have a siphoning of of, uh, of the water where it's most needed. You know, um, I also have Air Force what former Air Force weather observer who said she was monitoring uh, clouds. For she can no longer recognize the clouds anymore. She can't tell where the base is true. at. Um, and but she said at the time we were doing weather modification for drought relief. But really, what was happening is the more we were doing it, the more drought. There was. The, and, and, and that's that's a um, best uh, example of that is at the Cal Water 2015 study where they basically said, hey, drought conditions in California are exacerbated by putting too many cloud seeds up there. That we put so many aerosols up there that we've shut off precipitation. And now they've realized that atmospheric rivers play a, a huge role in this. So what they're saying is, we need to know when the atmospheric river is coming so that we know the ideal situation to put seeds in there because if there's not enough water, we're gonna shut off precipitation. So uh, I did a paper on this, how Texas stole California's rain. And it was about David Kaczynski and Cy Blue and how they said they were gonna steer an atmospheric river into Texas in 2012. They got a permit and an exemption, they did it. And since 2012, we know how Texas floods go and we know how dry California's been. So this atmospheric river typically used to go in through LA and it would come up from the equator into LA. Now it's coming up from the equator into Texas. Is it climate change? Is it the sun? Is it just our relationship to the universe that suddenly now the atmospheric river? No, there's a guy who said he wanted to steer one. Right. And he did. And it's been there ever since. So. A lot of this stuff, I think that people aren't, you know, they don't know that even that weather can be controlled. So there's a lot. I find that uh, amongst the, you know, it's uh, compartmentalized, like like health, like everything else. Right. Everyone's got their corner of things. But um, there was another uh, point right. regarding the harvest thing, and you might have to shorten this on the edit. But um, 
the yeah. harvesting of the water. Yeah, the, the hydro. Oh, so the AMS guy, it works with a group. I'll have to get it on my phone. The name of the, the group that studies meteorology around cooling towers year round. So I find it hard pressed to 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 I know believe that they don't. They're not Chicago. aware of the meteorological effects of this dumping that's happening on a localized level. You know, the Baton Rouge flood, yeah. New Orleans, and I myself see these big plumes in in the summertime coming out. Yeah. But then our rain comes down out, and my son even like was like, "Oh look, it looks like a saber, like my sword. He's got a yeah. saber because the clouds are being." Yeah. Uh, so, but so, so water vapor pollution, you can check out Weather War 101 on uh, YouTube. He's the best guy to follow for that sort of thing. He covers it in depth, has many time lapse videos of water vapor contributing to large storm formation. So, check him out. Yeah, no, what I found interesting though, I, I did ask him uh, three times to acknowledge the, 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 the traction for Doppler radar, um, and it's been crickets. No, he. I don't want to get into talking bad about no, no, a person no. who doesn't have a name or face. But, yeah, no, um, I mean, I'm just saying yeah, I, we were in communication. Talk, he doesn't want to talk about that. He, it, What I find really sad about the activist community is that everybody seems to have their own thing, and they don't really want to work well together. And I'm okay with that because I'm a rugged individualist. We're, we're, we're willing to But, but well, seriously, right. like, um, if we don't share information, if we're not open, then why would we expect these people to? I mean, how can I come in here and tell these people, why don't you be transparent and open and honest, but we're all fighting about who's got the better idea. I don't care. Oh, I'm way past all that. All together yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, we, we really need to just have an open and honest dialogue with the scientists and, and the people doing this stuff. So if all the activists have a main question or main problem, how do we articulate that? What, what would that be? There, that's the, the problem that I see is that too people, many heads, are, yeah, too many cooks. people are scared because there are a lot of people out there putting out fear, period. So when you create fear, uncertainty, and doubt, people will reach for anything. And that's the truth. Um, for the longest time, I spent three years in that fear, uncertainty, and doubt mindset. And everything I put out on the internet was scary and not based in solutions. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. So for me, I try to combat that by being pragmatic, being realistic, and being solutions-based. So what's the next big thing we need to find out or do? I think that we know enough to act on any, all of this. What we need to be doing is demanding accountability. That's yes. why I'm here with this uh, en Environmental Modification Accountability Act, that we can really start to get the sensors to catch people doing this stuff, to get the kind of data that we need to prove this in court. because. Talking about this isn't going to solve anything. Suing people will. Right. Is there damage that's already being done that's going to be too late if we don't do something? Or if we're just measuring, will we lose a window of opportunity? I, we have to start now. That's my solution. I mean, there is no window of opportunity. That window passed a long time ago, in my opinion. Right, but that's not so, why we don't do anything. Yeah, we do. We just it, do we, because that's what we have to do. It's it's about. It has to be done. I mean, honestly, if people could resonate this idea that weather warfare is a possibility, just that it's a possibility, not that it's a reality that it's happening every day and killing people, but the fact that it is a possibility well, it and there is no defense for it. It has happened. We know. We have the yeah, record. Of that. We have the records to prove it. Congressional records. So, the point is, it is a thing. We know it's a thing. They have the capability of doing it today, and there's no way to catch anybody doing it. So wow. we're doing the best we can with the instruments we have to do surveillance. But now, one thing I heard from a, a, a actually a lawyer's wife was because the lawyer didn't want to touch it. Although I do have a lawyer who's willing to consult, but not do anything. But the lawyer's wife said, get a statistician, so we're trying mm -hmm. to contact. Because what are the statistical odds of an eye of a storm coming closer to the Doppler than anywhere else for how many storms and how many Dopplers in a row? Once we start eliminating, and I believe like that's what I'm kind of worried about Weather War 101 is because he keeps telling me, go to the power plants, leave Doppler alone. I'm like, uh, you tell me to leave something alone, I look at it. Yep. And I try to tell you that about him. Yeah, Anybody I, that tells you don't read somebody's stuff, oh, yeah. they got issues. And I tell everybody, I hate Dane Wigington's guts. I hate Go Dane read Wigington's everything guts he too. ever yeah. wrote because He's it might be. Working for the power plants. Yeah, He's but working for the power. But plants. he may have said one thing one time that was useful. So please watch everything he wa made 
to watch mine too. Yes. And, That's my solution and to keep that. keep up because I'm going to put a documentary yeah. putting it together. And any, anybody that tells you not to look at somebody's stuff, I would be very concerned about that. So I'm just going to, I'm wondering, you know, Weather War 101, why, why aren't you acknowledging the hurricanes and Doppler radar? What do you think about that? And I would ask him, do you have a real name or face? Because I've tried calling you for five years. Answer your damn phone or at least get one. Wait, you said who? Weather War 101. He's a guy with no name or face who's been around ever. Since he started stealing my radar, my next rad map, five years ago. His first act on YouTube was to steal my maps from climateviewer.org and make YouTube videos using them. But he does capture the water vapor release. So he I does even, a good even job on that. gatekeepers He's, can, if, well, if he is a deliberate or is, accidental yeah. one, or if he just specializing in niche oriented, you know, I think I think that doubt. I don't think that he's a gatekeeper. I think that he's just he's a one trick one, one trick, trick pony. Yeah. I mean, before this, all he talked about was next rads and and harp rings. That's why he's telling you. We that. were in a rapport it where was, I was promote. You know, it was me. Dutch sense in Weather War 101 talking about harp rings. I obviously learned a lot about harp and they stopped talking about it. And that's just the truth of the matter. And I was resonated at the time. Nobody knew my name. It was just R-E-Z and 8 d and I went on the internet and thought I was going to be a big shot and got trolled from those same people because they hated my guts for ruining all their fun. But calling Nexrads harp rings is stupid. Right. Well, and, and the thing is, if you're if you're trying to catch a trail, like I might be able to prove the chemicals on the ground, but I can't prove those chemicals came from that plane, and they know that, so they don't mind us talking about this. If you're setting yeah. up gatekeepers, you know, like for instance, Dane Wigington, I'm calling out as an actual gatekeeper. He is. I, I would like to think where the war isn't, but I feel a little miffed that he yeah. has not responded to three times my request for him to acknowledge that. Yeah. But anyways, um, and there might be a good reason. It's the Christmas holidays. We're all busy. Oh, yeah. We get so we're, we're, we're not paid to do this. Like some people, I, I don't know how... Uh, but Dane Wigington, who did a, a disinfo hit piece on cooling... T- weather modification by cooling towers? That's ridiculous. And I thought I was reading a Metabunk article. But and then he's like, I should know. I worked for the power plants 30 yeah. years ago. Well, yeah. that's interesting, Dane. Let's talk about that. So yeah, Bechtel, you gotta love that, right? So yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of talking heads in this industry. Yeah. I've pretty much stayed out of it because I don't like leaving my house. I mean, I like I like my life. I'm happy. I don't want the attention. Every time you point that thing at me, I get nervous. Um, but I have to do this. <laughs> But um, I have to do this because, honestly, nobody else is going to come up here and say the kind of stuff I'm going to say. So I'm here. I will tolerate it, and I will do it because it has to be done. But we're going to have a conversation with some of these geoengineers tomorrow and and talk about chemtrails and talk about the words that they don't want to use. I just talked to the Naval Research Lab people, and they were like, we can't really talk about ionospheric heat. Why not? This is a weather conference. That's space weather. Why can't we talk about that? The fact that we can't talk about it is a glaring, you know, it's a, a red hot clue. We were told not to talk about it. We were told were not, not to. He, she, a gag order. Yeah. yeah. They, they should leave it alone. We sold Harp, and that is all. In fact, if she would have kept talking, I'd have looked at her and said, that's because you're now using ionospheric heaters on satellites, right? Should I name those satellites? I haven't yet. It's coming up in a YouTube video when I get home. But regardless, like, they sold it to the University of Alaska because they don't need it anymore. They said they moved on to better ways to, mod- um, to manage the ionosphere. They're right. They're called CubeSats. And there's a whole lot of stuff going on that people don't really, you know, understand or it's moving so fast. And, you know, people like that, they don't want to talk about it. So, of course, it's kept in a secret little bubble because it's national security. And I hate that effing word. In a, in a perfect world, everything would be open source. There'd be no secrets, and that ain't ever gonna happen in my lifetime. So it's people like us that push for transparency. All right, what are our job? We done? We done? I think we yeah covered a little bit of turn.